want to just take about two or three minutes. I want to just take a moment. Let's just give God some praise this morning for just being the God that He is. Amen. 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 of every one of our praises. Oh, don't, don't, don't sit down just yet. Don't sit down just yet. We got to get the blood flowing. We got to get the, 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 the pain down. And, and we got to stand in this house because we've come to worship God on today. And I need us to understand that when we come to worship God, we come with the mind of service. I'll say that again. We come with the mind of service and worship. And we leave here energized to take on whatever the world brings. Amen. And we come on and join us this morning. As our sanctuary choir will lead us in our opening selection, followed by our prayer and our scripture. Then we'll come back with our offertory appeal and our word for today. Amen. 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 second chapter is going to be a little lengthy but to get your depth out of it and I have to go through these verses alright so bear with us it is not that long. now the feast of the unleavened bread drew near which is called the Passover and the chief priests and the scribes thought now they might kill him for the affair of the people then enter Satan into Judas, surname of Scaribus, being the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priest and the captain, how he might be betrayed him into betray him unto them. And they were glad and convert to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them, to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of the unloved bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go 
fed us the Passover that we may eat. And then they said unto him, Will thou will will thou prepare? Will be, thou will be prepare? And he said unto him, Behold, when you are uh, entering into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entered in. And he shall say unto the good man of the house, The master said unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the path over with my disciple? And he said, And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when he had, when the hour was come, he sat down and sat down with the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With with thou with thy with thy desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat. I will not any more eat the arrow until the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take eat, this is, and divide it among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the cup of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. God's words to God's people. Amen. It is once and again that God has allowed us to come together, remembering that he said, forsake not the assembly of the brothering. We thank you, O oh God, for blessing us with traveling mercies, guiding angels, and peace of travel, that we will enter into this house of prayer. Look and to hear a word from heaven. God, we thank you because you allowed us to come together. Yes, Lord. We come in thanksgiving because you didn't have to do it, but God, you blessed us so immensely down through the many years that we uh, come in appreciation to give your name the praise. We come thanking you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for blessing us with soundness of mind. And because our minds are sound, we know that thou art our creator and our sustainer. We come now thanking you for these eyes that we're able to see the creation that you made for us. We're thanking you for these two ears that we are able to hear the sound that your creation makes. Then we thank you, Master, for this tongue that can form the words and say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, because you've been so good to us. Ah, how can we put it in words because we know that you created up everything uh, we don't own anything just a, uh, just with just stewards for just a little while as we travel through this glory on our way to glory we thank you oh master because we come down to get our instruction from you to continue on our journey to glory this word, this word that's going to come through our pastor will go stronger because you said in your word, draw an eye unto me and I'll draw an eye to you. So we come down drawing an arrow, oh God, because you said if you come, I'll hold you up. If you praise me, I'll lift you up. So we come to praise you this morning. Through songs, we come to praise you through the word. We come, oh God, to just praise you because you are God, our creator and our sustainer. We pray now for every sick, every shut-in, and every bereaved family, the ones troubling mind everywhere. We pray, oh God, that you'll hear our prayer this morning as we pray for our, one, uh, our ones right here at the Springfield family. We ask a special prayer for our friend and brother, Deacon Horace James, lying on a bed of affliction down at the Titan Hospital. We ask that you bless him. Let your will be done in his life. We pray for him. Uh, Sister Mabel Wright, Sister Dorothy Wright, Brother Paul Wright. We pray for Dick Reverend Herbert and Hattie Smith. We pray for Sister Nelson as he lies in the hospital. Well, God, we know that you are here, there, and everywhere. So, God, we ask that you just bless in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you hear us now as we come 
to hear a word. We ask that you strengthen our pastor when he stands before the people to bring a word. We ask that you speak for him, through him, and with him, that he'll bring a word and speak with power and authority given through you. We pray, O oh God, hear us this morning. Bless us for coming. Then, O oh God, when, 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 when praying days are over and we're on our way to glory, we ask, O oh God, you'll hear us and say to us those words we love to hear. Oh God, you've been faithful over a few things. Come now. I'll leave, leave you higher into many things. We pray, oh God, that you continue to lead, guide, and direct us. That when, when, when we cross over that chilly drawing and our feet touch the, girls, the streets of gold, we want to see your face to face and tell you thank you for how you brought us over. Thank you for being our bridge over troubled water. Thank you for being kings of men. Thank you, oh God, because you've been good to us. Now, oh God, hear us morning as we end this prayer, but we ask, oh God, as we continue to pray inwardly, you will be bring your pastor before us, give him what he needs to bring a word. We end this prayer outwardly, but we'll continue to pray inwardly, for this is our prayer, this is our hope, and our soon coming King, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, and all that know and love the Lord, say amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. amen. Thank you so much for scripture and prayer on today. I pray that all of you have had the opportunity to give on today. If you have not had an opportunity to give, the ushers scattered about before you leave today, please give unto the house of God. Amen. For your contributions, your tithes and offerings are greatly appreciated because we know it takes ministry. It takes money to do ministry. Amen. For those of you that have given, we thank you so much for giving on today. For those of you who are giving electronically, we thank you for that as well. And just in case you did not, you can give several different ways. Uh, you can always bring it on Sunday morning. We thank you for that. We can always mail it. We thank you for that. Uh, if you have a deacon, a deacon will come by and get it. We thank you for that. But we also can give via Givelify, Springfield, um, I think it's Springfield Church, I think Springfield Baptist Church, amen, I think that's what it is. All you do is go on and give whatever amount you choose to give, amen. We thank you for all of those ways of giving, we thank you for giving because we appreciate it. And from the bottom of my heart and from on behalf of the leadership here, we know that you've been faithful during this pandemic and you're giving and we are appreciative of that because what you see today is because you've been faithful in doing that. Here's the thing, God loves faithful givers. God loves faithful givers. I mean, you said, y'all ain't clapping. Because that was your chance to shout, but God loves faithful givers. When you give, and you give out of the spirit in which is right, the spirit of giving, knowing that God will bless you, then it makes it so much easier to give. Amen? Amen. We thank you so much and we bless you for that on today. Now, our central required day will come and they will give us a selection or selections, I should, I should say. After that, we'll come up with the word of God on today. Amen. Come on, quiet and sing.
just how great he is. Lord have mercy. And when you think about how good God has been, you ought to be able to express, just like I can express, that God is still good. And if you don't know that God is good, all you got to do is go look in the mirror. And you can see where he's brought you from. Because he's brought us all from a mighty long way. Amen. 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 To all of you here, thank you so much for being here today. To those of you joining us via Facebook, we thank you as well. Via YouTube, we thank you. Without you, none of this would be possible. Now, thank all of you for being here today. For you make it easy to do what God has called me to do, which is preach. Today I should go with me to the book according to Luke, the gospel according to Luke, chapter 23. I want to just lift up one verse to, to one of our pastor man that says thank you so much. Reverend Big Boy, amen. Our Reverend Brian, thank you for being here. To our daughter of the house, thank you for being here as well. We thank you, Sister Daisy, we thank you for being here as well. To the deacons, trustees, to all of you, to the ushers, you are the real MVPs in this house on today. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. To this choir. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. To the musicians, thank you as well. To my family, Amen. thank you so much for being here today as well. Luke chapter 23, I want to just lift up verse 34. Just one verse. That's all we need today. Just one verse. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. It said, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast it lots. Amen. 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 We are approximately, I think I want to say three Sundays away from Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. And around this time of the year, which is probably my favorite time of the year, you hear about the words of Jesus. For the next three Sundays, the next three Wednesday nights, I'm going to be dealing with what Jesus said. What Jesus said. And in these sayings, it's seven of them to be exact. 
So that means you know one Wednesday, one Sunday, you're getting a double dose. Mm -hmm. If there's seven, then we got six. I'm just gonna just do the math there for you. Cause somebody's gonna go home and try to figure out what that is and how that's gonna work. But it's gonna work, I promise. In these sayings, the sermon series, what Jesus said, the first word is the word forgive. For give. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. May you ever continue to bless us and keep us. Touch this time, your man servant, that I may be yours. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Forgive. In these words, these last words or phrases, we hear from a blood matted dying Savior who was not a Savior as of yet, but was merely the man, the Son of God. As he hung dying on the cross, as he went through agony and pain as he tried to hold on and to take the punishment that he did not deserve. He found it necessary to still speak blessings from the cross. It's, it's amazing that the one who came to save the world, the one who was without fault, the one whom, whom was sent that the world might be saved through him, is now dying <coughs> on a cross. Let me see if I can paint this picture for you to really give it some context. It's on a Dark and gloomy Friday, Thursday, excuse me, to be exact. He's been taken from court to court on charges of blasphemy, charges of being the Messiah, all because he challenged the status quo. Follow me, I'm going to take us somewhere here. He, he, he. He finds himself being whipped. He finds himself being locked up. Um, a crown of thorns being placed on his head. He's walked down the Via Dolorosa up to the place, up to a hill called Golgotha, to a place called Calvary. And now, a place that was set and designed for people to die becomes a setting for where all things begin. The sky has darkened. Lord have mercy. Two thieves hang beside him. And he's hung there like a common criminal. The one without fault. The one without cause. The one who is coming to save the world. The one whom John the Baptist said, there's one that comes who is greater than I. He comes that the world might be saved through him that I am not um, I am not worthy enough to unbuckle his his shoes. But, but there's one that's coming. Y'all need to help me this morning. He's hanging there and he's dying, but he's not dying for himself. He's dying for us. And he has the mindset through the pain, through the agony, through the irony of all that is going on. He, he, has, he has the forethought to still speak mm -hmm. from the cross. And it's not <coughs> surprising that the very first phrase he speaks is about forgiveness. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness being the first word that he speaks from the cross uh, leads us to understand that, that there's something about the word forgiveness, there's something about the word forgive that is powerful and yet it is still liberating. 
And that, that we in the black African American church, we must understand that, that we preach a gospel that is called liberation theology, where it talks about us liberating ourselves to be free to worship, but also be free in our mind and free in ourselves and free enough to understand that there's a God that we serve that does not matter what the color of our skin is, but what matters is that we serve a God that can still deliver us out of any and everything. But yet, but yet, but yet, that word forgive, that word forgive is a word that seems to be so hard for us to comprehend. I'm trying to help us. See, I promise you, I'm a preacher. Just right now, I'm going to have to set this up. And, and, and he speaks this word. He says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. He, 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 he begins to speak. And he says to them, he says to his father, he says, Father, I know I'm hanging here. I know I'm about to die. I know what you, I know what the deal was whenever I came out of heaven. I, I knew when I came here what my purpose was. But, but Father, I need you just to do one thing before I leave. Father, I, I need you to understand that you need to forgive them. I think y'all missed it. He, he, he's hanging there. He's dying. He, he, he's, about, he's about to go into the eternals of the eternals, but yet he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about them. Yeah. Y'all yeah. help me this morning. I, I, yeah. what, 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 I, what, I, what I'm trying to get to you and yeah, what I'm trying to understand is that if we are to truly learn how to forgive, we have to first stop thinking about self and think about others. I know I won't get too many amens there because 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 anytime we talk about forgiveness, our folk get real tight up because we want our forgiveness to be conditional. I will forgive you if you do such as I will forgive you if you say this. I will forgive you if. But forgiveness has nothing to do with the if. Forgiveness has to do with you understanding that what is going on is bigger than you. Yes. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That yes. that when you forgive, what you are really saying is that. I'm moving past my pain so that I can get to my future. Don't y'all get quiet on me here. Right, right, here it is, here it is, here it is. The reason why so many of us are still standing and stuck is not because of what we're doing. It's because we have yet to learn how to truly forgive. That if we would forgive, if we would learn how to forgive without conditions that, and realize that at any point in time uh, that that the person who forgives uh, can also can, can also be the person that needs to be forgiven. All right, now. Y'all got way quiet there, huh? Uh, let me see if I can help you here, huh? Uh, it, it, is, it, is it not in the Bible where it says that, 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 that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Does it, does it not say that we are all but filthy rags in the eyesight of a just and good God, and what that leads me and leads me to understand, my brothers and sisters, beloved, is that is that we all make mistakes, we all have problems, so we all must understand that we need some forgiveness every once in a while. When God extends out grace and mercy to us, out, what he's really saying is that I have forgiven you, Lord have mercy, y'all, for whatever the offense is, and understand that when I died on the cross, I, I died for your Forgiveness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. He, he, he says, Father, forgive them. Huh. But look what he says. He, he, he goes to the Father on, on their behalf, on, on, on our behalf. Uh, he goes to the Father and he says, Father, forgive them. Uh, because, because they don't understand what's truly going on. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Uh, but let's deal with this request first. Uh, he doesn't say, I forgive you. He says, Father, forgive them. Uh, can, can, can I tell you that the first thing that, that I see in this text, the first thing is that when you forgive, you must always go to the Father first. See, forgiveness can't be lip service. Forgiveness has to come from the heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the only way I can truly forgive is I've got to go to the Father first. Uh, and when I get to the Father, the Father then will show me how I ought to forgive so that it no longer affects me. Here it is. Uh, we try to forgive, <laughs> but we don't go to the Father. And because we don't go to the Father, we still hold it on to stuff that we said that we already forgiven folk for. That's why I focus in the church and not speak to one another for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Then go, just go, go, go warm up a truck, please. 
Dan begitu Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Oh, I know I'm in the house, huh? Uh, uh, mother and daughter, father and son, children and parents falling out, not speaking because because of something that, that they said they were over, but they truly weren't over. Y'all gonna help me here. Mm. Uh, can, 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 I, can, I, can I please say this? A country, God, God I said I wasn't going to go there, but I got to go there. A country that's done folk wrong uh, has yet to ask for forgiveness because they haven't talked to the Father. Y'all have mercy. Yes, sir. Mm. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And and then we have the unmitigated God to come to the church and say, Holy, holy, holy. Yes. Yes. When we know, deep down inside, that it's folk that we can't stand. Y'all might say amen. I'm talking about getting no better, but I'm trying to help you here today. Because I need you to understand that I didn't say this is what Jesus said. I, uh, he said, He said, Father. Forgive them because because he understood that 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 because we are made of flesh because we're not perfect that our forgiveness would have conditions on it. But he says, I I need you to fuck on the conditions and just forgive because forgiveness is this. I, here's the best definition of forgiveness I've ever heard, and it and it and it, it never came from Webster. It came out of a nursery rhyme. It says, forgiveness is the fragrance that the roses give off after it's been trampled. Oh, Lord have mercy. In other words, in other words, when you learn how to forgive, I'm about to help you here up. You smell different, you walk different, you talk different, and then in the Bible says this uh, that our praises are, are like a sweet smelling aroma. God have mercy in the nostril of our God. Why? Because we learn how to forgive. Oh, have mercy. He said, he said, Father, Father, Father. He what he's really saying, Father, teach me how to forgive them. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Father, Father, I, I, I can't do this in my flesh. I, I can't do this with me. Because if I did it, I, I'm going to have conditions. Yeah, yeah, I forgive you, but you got to do this. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know you did me wrong. But but you know, you know how we love to say, uh, I forgive you, but I won't forget. They say it, yes, they say it. That's right. Guilty. I've said it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be transparent today. Guilty. But, but here it is. Christ says, I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to cast it out, and I ain't going looking for it no more. So if we ought to be Christ like, if we ought to be those who are followers of Christ and we want to follow Christ's example, then why is it when it comes to forgiveness? It's so hard. So here it is, huh? Forgiveness has been the theme throughout the entire Bible. From the beginning until the end. It's always been about forgiveness. And, and, and we must understand that, that, that in order for us to ever see the kingdom of God, we've got to learn how to have true forgiveness. But I watch this. It says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Here it is. Here it is. He goes to the Father to ask for forgiveness. But then look at who he's asking for. He said, Father, I need you to help me to forgive them. Who is them? Well, we talked about this them before. Them, they, those, us, we, you know, all of them, you know, us. That's what we're talking about. And, and what are these forgiving them for? Huh? That's that's the that's the that's the that's the comma there. What you don't see it there, but the, the commas and pause will give you question. What am I forgiving them for? He said, For they know not what they do. Mm. So what is it that they're doing that they need forgiveness for? Well, it would seem like at just first glance huh, that he's asking them, he's asking the Father to forgive them for crucifying him. But then that would go against the will of God and why he was sent there in the beginning. Y'all need to help me here. Because in the beginning, watch this. Uh, um, um, they, they, it was always said uh, that, that there would be one that would come uh, who would be like a lamb to the slaughter and they would be the lamb that taketh away the sins of the entire world. So when you really look at it, you must understand, well, who 
is them and what are they doing? So it can't be about the immediate situation that he's in. Watch this. Uh, so what it has to be about is that he's looking past his present and looking into the future. Y'all need to help me right now. And what he realizes is that there are going to be some things uh, that after I leave here uh, that I can't readily touch. Uh, I can't readily heal. Uh, I can't readily deal with. Uh, so Father, I need you uh, to put some forgiveness on credit uh, so that when an offense comes, uh, they'll be able uh, to tap into the bank called Jesus Trust. Uh, and they'll be able to get some forgiveness out of the bank that I've already put there. Uh, and beloved, when I realize that, I realize uh, that that's why the scripture says uh, he looked past all our faults uh, and still provided uh, every one of our yes. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. It became so clear to me that, 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 that Jesus was prophetic even while on the cross. Uh, he's sitting there on the cross. Uh, he's dying. Uh, he asked the Father to forgive, but he's looking past the moment and he's looking at his future. Watch this. I'm about to bless you. Hmm. When you truly learn how to forgive, you'll realize that what you're forgiving, it really has less to do about now and more to do about what's to come. I gotta forgive some folk. I gotta forgive some things because my future depends on how I forgive now so that I can be a blessing and be blessed later. Don't have mercy, y'all. Y'all don't know when to shout. Right there. That was your chance to shout because 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 you you now can take flight. Because you realize if I forgive today, it opens up some doors in the future. And when it opens up the doors in the future, that's when God starts to bless. You don't know what God has in store for you, but you've been holding on to stuff in the present. You've been holding on to stuff from the past. And God said, I can't move you to your future until you let go what's already happened or what's happening. And realize I'm bigger than right now. I'm bigger than before. And I care about your future. Preach on the man, but ain't nobody saying nothing right now. Wow. He, he says, he says, he says, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, what is it that I'm doing? Well, I, 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 I'm glad you asked Springfield. There's a couple things that I, I thought about that we're doing. Uh, that maybe, maybe this is why God hasn't opened up the floodgates. Uh, but today he'll open up these floodgates. Uh, because at the end of this, uh, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Uh, are you ready to forgive? Uh, here it is. Here it is. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it, y'all, uh, that I'm doing? Uh, that you're doing? Uh, well, uh, I said some of them uh, be holding on to things uh, that really don't matter. That's one. Uh, but you know what? That's real easy. Forgive and move on because what's happened is happened. Uh, and what I learned before is that you can't change the past. Uh, only thing you can do is learn from it, grow from it, and keep on going. Uh, or go ahead and high five your neighbor if you could. Uh, go ahead and just air high five and say, neighbor, I'm moving on right now uh, because I can't change what happened. Uh, I can't change what's going on. But what I can do uh, is I can secure my future. And when I secure my future, that lets me know that God is giving me a promise. Well, 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 huh, well not, not, not only are we holding on to things, huh, but then the Bible also says, well, let me just say this way, huh, we also, we also, we also have not learned to let go, but we also have not learned just to say sorry. Oh. Bible declares that when you have an issue with your brother and sister, mm -hmm. you ought to go to them That's right. and handle that. That's right. Not Get everybody involved. Ain't trying to hit y'all. Y'all got quiet over here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. If I got an issue with somebody, I ought to be able to go to them. Hmm. Watch this. I ain't got to put it on Facebook. <laughs> I ain't got to broadcast on the telephone. I mean, t I mean, telephone. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, um, um we, 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 we ain't got to do all that. We, we can handle it between us. The problem is, is that when we hurt, we want everybody to know that we hurt. But you gotta stop playing the victim and act like you a survivor. See, 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 forgiveness will take you from victim mode to survival mode. And the thing about being a victim is I gotta have pity.
city to be a victim. I, I gotta feel pitiful to be a victim. I, but when I move from, vic, from, from victimization I, to being a survivor, it means I, that I no longer want your pity. I, I just need you to see my strength. I, because every survivor will tell you I, I'm better, much better, because I survived what I've been through. I, do I got any survivors in here? That you survive what you've been through, uh, and you keep on living because you know that it was nobody but God that brought you out. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Uh, uh, so you gotta stop throwing pity parties. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, we, we, you know, we can throw a pity party quick. Huh? Oh, woe is me. Huh? Oh, I got so much going on. Huh? No, baby, huh? everybody got a lot going on. Huh? But what you got to realize is that, is that you serve a God that's bigger than everything. Huh? And you got to turn some stuff loose. You got to keep on moving and say, I'm a survivor. I'm no longer a yeah. Yeah. He said, look, huh? forgive them. <laughs> For they know now what they do <laughs> and, and, and that word do is interesting because yes. it means that it's on going <laughs> do is a verb but it's an action verb it's, 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 it means it's ongoing it means do can be in the present as well as the future y'all can help me right now and so it means that, that it's ongoing huh? and so that's why he says uh, no 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 it's just not about right now it's about what's going to happen because they put the word do there right what he's simply saying is that, is that there's going to be some stuff that's going to be done uh, have mercy, uh, that's going to be done and be doing uh, Lord have mercy after this moment uh, and after this moment uh, I've got to get past myself and past this moment and realize that my forgiveness is just not for one day but my forgiveness is for every day He's on this cross. He's hanging there. He's dying. I'm almost done. And, and, and as he's on the cross, he's talking about forgiveness. Now, Christ, I get it. You came to save the world, but the world has turned its back on you. Don't y'all miss this here. Could this bless me? They were so disinterested in what you said. That the Bible said, and after he said this, they divided his garments and sold them off. Can, can I can I can I give you a reality? Can, can, and I, I hate to break this news to you. But this is why you gotta forgive. You gotta forgive. Because the same folk that you not forgive. Guess what? They going on with life like you don't even exist. I hate to break the news to you. They don't care if you forgive them or not. But see, forgiveness ain't for them. <laughs> forgiveness is for you. Even though you were the one that was accosted or you were the one that that was offended, Lord that mercy, y'all. Uh, it ain't for them. It's for you because here it is. Folk that offend you, guess what they gonna do every night? Get in their bed, roll their covers up, struggle up on their pillow, and they be drooling in about 10 minutes. While you pace the floor, while you walking around, while you can't sleep because you had let it go. But I tell you, today is the last day that you face. Today is the last day that you walk around. Today is the last day you lose sleep. Stretch yourself out. You got to learn to let it go. Because at the end of the day, it ain't forgiveness ain't for them. Forgiveness is for you. That's why Christ said, look, I, I got to do this. Huh? Because I came on a mission. Huh? And my mission was huh, that I came to save the world. So, Father, you got to forgive us. Lord have mercy. Uh, lastly, 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 let's hold you too long. Uh, uh, we must look at the tone in which he said it. Uh, he's hanging on the cross. Uh, he says, Father, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they do. Uh, not only was it prophetic, uh, not only was it for right now, but then the tone in which he said it was also emphatic. Uh, he says, Father, forgive them, comma, for they 
do not know what they are doing. Uh, in other words, uh, he's letting us know uh, that every time uh, somebody comes your way, we can't always take offense and think that they need to be forgiven. Uh, because sometimes they really just don't know. And here's the thing. Uh, you can't hold stuff over folk's head. Uh, and they don't even know uh, why you hold holding it over their head. Uh, that's the problem we have in our churches. Uh, is that folk get so easily offended. Uh, but can I stop by and tell you uh, that if you are truly a child of God, uh, you can't be so easily offended. Uh, that's a trick of the enemy. Uh, the enemy will have you thinking uh, that everybody's against you. Uh, the enemy will have you thinking uh, that you just can't get along. Uh, the enemy will have you thinking uh, that God has left you and forsaken you. The enemy will have you thinking uh, that you have to forgive. Uh, but I hear God saying, uh, you got to forgive. Uh, you got to let it go. Uh, because some stuff, uh, it was never an issue to begin with. Uh, you just took it the wrong way. Uh, because you were in your feelings. Uh, but can I tell somebody today, get out your feelings and stand up, be a survivor, and say, Lord, I forgive. Can I get about four or five folks that don't mind testifying uh, that today uh, is the last day uh, I walk around like this, uh, that I choose to forgive. Uh, I choose to forgive. Uh, I forgive each and every person uh, that's ever offended me. Uh, I ask for forgiveness. Uh, for each and every person uh, that I may have offended uh, because today uh, I'm walking in the liberation uh, of knowing uh, that I'm free. Uh, I'm free indeed. Uh, and if I'm free indeed, uh, I can worship God uh, the way I need to worship Him. Uh, I can get my healing uh, because I learned how to forgive. Uh, I can get my breakthrough uh, because I learned how to forgive. Uh, can I get about five or six and I don't think seven? This, right, don't get mad at me. Get, get mad at the one who, who told me to say it, it was Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let them work that out. <laughs> As we stand on our feet. We have to learn how to forgive. Because if we don't know how to forgive, then we teach our children how not to forgive. This, this, this vindictiveness, this vindictive spirit that floats around has to be gone in order for us to move ahead. Yeah. We get bogged down because such such did this so that I have to do this. No, you don't have to do anything. The Bible says, pray for those that abuse you. Pray for them. No one in the Bible said get back. I know somebody said, well, say that. I don't know that. And I, I, know somebody, I know somebody's going to say that. But you ain't God, so that don't apply to you. <laughs> and another thing is this. If we want to be forgiven, we have to learn how to be the one that forgives. You can't want forgiveness if they don't know how to forgive. Or won't forgive. So today, if you know, it's only you know this, if you know that you've been holding on to some stuff, if you know that you've done some things that require forgiveness, be bold enough to go get that straight. Because here's the thing don't leave there holding on to stuff. Can I say this? Stress will kill you. Stress will kill you. You've got to learn how to let some things go. I say ouch, but that's okay. Come on. Learn. Want to say enough is enough? You can't have my peace. So I'm going to forgive and move on. 
hope because my future depends on my forgiveness today. Is there one today that does not know Christ is a part of your sins? I told you that Christ is a forgiver. Christ is a forgiver. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. If you remember Christ the part of your sins, this is your opportunity to come. And as you come, I will just trust that God will open up your hearts, that God will continue to be with you. But also this, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, then he shall direct you and lead your path. He's not just growing the kingdom, but he's also growing Springfield. Mm-hmm. And amen, amen. And we have two today that have come. Hallelujah. They're coming right. They're returning back home. I'm going to say it that way. Amen. They're returning back home. And so, so we, we, we know that they're going to they're gonna come under Christian experience. So we're going we're gonna to definitely um, um, have them to, to get, get us what they need. And once they get what they need, we're going to give them the right hand of fellowship. But we're going to welcome them home because... We're so thankful to be home. Here's the thing. Church membership is just that. It's church membership. And I'm very clear when I say this. Church membership gives you a couple of things. It gives you a place to be buried, a place to worship on Sunday, and if you get married, a place to be married. In. That's, that's the benefit of church membership. That's just beyond. That's just call it what it is. When you're sick, we're going to come see you. We're going to pray for you. But kingdom membership is more important. Because that gives you eternal life. And I'm very clear about that because I don't want folk to think that just because you join the church, that means that you're saved. Because a lot of folk come to church and part of church, but they ain't saved. Well, but I want you to be both. I want you to be a part of God's kingdom and our kingdom here at Springfield Church Baptist. So we thank you so much for, for coming back home, and I thank you and 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 just. And just deep world we'll give you we'll get with you let you know exactly what we need to do to make everything official official but as of today welcome home we thank you we bless you let's take our hands out of prayer amen 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 would you like anything to say before we move forward or? i just want to say i am so thrilled and excited to be home again you know i've been coming here for a year now amen. and i enjoy being here amen. and i'm home <laughs> I just want to say that since I left home, you know, I always was in church. And then I said, when I do come back home, I remember I was baptized out there in the field. And so I come back where my roots were. Amen. I was coming to the church in my mama's womb. And I raised up in this church. Mm-hmm. And what better place to come back for where I started from? Amen. 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 Well, may God continue to bless both of you. And have this become official now. You know, we got many seats up there in that choir. <laughs> um, 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 we got some other positions that need some people in them. And so you make yourself at home and come work. Here's the other thing now. Just don't join and come see. Join and come work. 
Amen. 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 God bless you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. It's always good. It's always good. It's always good when, 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 when folk come home. It's always good when folk join. But just before we leave, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to uh, pray. Because I feel that, that there's someone somewhere, maybe it's on Facebook, that's struggling this morning with this forgiveness piece. I need you to understand that forgiveness, whoever, whoever it is, do not let it become a weight around your neck that it weighs you down. Let it go. Let it go. Be liberated. Be set free today. Because who the Spirit sets free is free indeed. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. For just being a God of the second chance. For just being a God that hung on the cross, but yet taught us in just one phrase all we needed to know about salvation, which is forgiveness. Father, today we come with forgiveness on our minds and on our lips. That as we speak on today, we speak, Father, with the authority of knowing that today is the last day that we walk around holding on to things. Right now, Father, in your word you said, forgive us our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us so that we will not be led into temptation. Father, on today, deliver us right now. Deliver us right now, Father. Let us forgive those that have harmed us. Let us forgive those that may have altered the, the trajectory of our life. Because, Father, it was still a part of your plan. Father, we know that tragedy is hard sometimes to forgive. But, but Father, work on us from the inside that we might not allow it to become a sin and keep us from the kingdom of God. Father, today this is personal, Father. Father, not only allow us to forgive those that have done wrong to us, Father, but Father, allow us to be forgiven for those that we may have offended, Father. Father, on today, Father, let us be able to go back to those, Father, that we know that we've harmed or hurt and release them, Father, from the weight in which we've cost. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you because we know, Father, that you can do all things but fail. Thank you for the two that return home on today, Father. Father, I ask that you would touch them right now, Father. Give them strength, Father, to let them know that now that they are home, Father, that there's still work to do. For all men shall work while it's still yet day. For when that comes, no man or woman can work, Father. Father, we thank you for each and every member. We thank you for those who are at home today watching, Father. We thank you for those all over the length and breadth of this country that are watching, Father. Father, whatever they need today, I ask you right now, Father, to be with them. Remember those, Father, on hospital beds. Remember those, Father, that are in nursing homes. Remember our members, Father, who, who lay right now in ICU units, Father who lay in hospital beds, Father, be with them right now. Remember our sick and our shut-in, Father. But Father, also remember their caretakers on today. Father, for caring for me, caring for one that is sick can be just as hard on them, Father. So Father, give them strength on today. And they will forever love and trust you. And trust that your will will be done in their lives. Now, Father, remember this church. Remember each and every ministry, Father, each and every leader, Father. Remember them right now. Continue to build them up and to give them the wisdom that they need, Father. But let them lead with a forgiving heart, Father. A forgiving heart, not to take things so little, not to take things to heart, but to do it in love and do it in Christ. Now, Father, be with this your man servant. Father, for I'm not exempt. Search out my heart right now, Father, and find that which has hurt me, Father, and allow me to let it go, Father. Father, I ask you right now, Father, that my actions, that they will always be ruled by you, Father. And for that, we all will be so careful to give your name the praise. We thank you and we bless you, Father. For all these blessings in your name, we pray. And the people of God, we said amen. 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 Just before.
before we leave on today, I want to just give uh, two quick, um, well, three quick, um, I guess, observations. Um, one, um, let's please, ma'am, please, sir, um, when we come into church, let's please um, follow the ushers' directions of leaving and going out. Um, there's that way for a reason. We have a certain way in which we're trying to come in and we see it so that we can be safe. So I ask that you please follow those instructions of those ushers. Um, they have been given specific instructions on how we ought to be seated and how we ought to leave out. So please um, do that. That is for your safety. So please do that. I know that. I know. I know. We all got special seats. I promise you. I understand. But let's be safe. Let's be Amen. safe. Amen. Amen. We want to keep our doors open. So let's do that, please. Thank you all for wearing your mask. I appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate that because that shows that you have the heart to want to be here and want to keep our doors open. Amen. We thank you for that as well. Uh, hopefully they will come. Um, we don't have to do these masks, but until that day comes, this is what we're dealing with. Also, also, this month has gone by, and I turned to my head, not my heart. I have failed to acknowledge that this is Women's History Month. And I want to just say this because we want to give acknowledgement to um, women all over this world. This is Women's History Month. Amen. We have some amazing women, um, not just in the world, but in this church. Amen. And we thank all of you for being the beautiful queens that you are. Because without you, men, without y'all, we'd be in trouble. So we appreciate y'all. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Also, 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 this is First Ladies Appreciation Month as well. And so, so we, we, we need to just, um, First Lady Appreciation Month, that's what it is. That's what this month is. That's March. And so we need to remember the First Ladies all over this country, especially our own. Um, we should remember them and, and just also give them a hand clap of praise. So. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Please, please understand, please understand. Without her, oh Lord, you pastor be in trouble. So, <laughs> I thank y'all. I thank y'all for that as well. Also, also on Wednesday night, um, we will definitely um, the plan is to be coming from our service here uh, for our second word that Jesus says, second word that Jesus says. Um, I'm going to ask a question before we do that, and I'm going to go off air when I say this because I don't want to give the wrong information. Uh, so I ask that question before we, we leave on today. Um, with that being said, let's all stand to our feet. Everybody knows just brought to my attention. March 29th. March 29th is Vietnam Veterans Day. March 29th, the Vietnam Veterans Day. You know, we have several folk in our church who served in Vietnam. We thank you for your service. All our veterans, but definitely those from, from Vietnam, we thank you for your service. Thank you for we continue to support you in that. And, and, and I'm, I got a whole other spill on that, but I'll do that for a whole other day. Um, so I close the song. Holy Spirit, rest from the body henceforth, now and forevermore. Keep us safe until we are to meet again. We thank you for just this day. And for that, we say amen, amen, amen. amen.